gorgeous, gorgeous Leos. Let's dive in. Now, ooh, we've had a very interesting collection of readings today. I'm really hoping that you're in higher vibes. Please hit the like for me. Send me your energy, okay? Like, please understand I'm trying so hard as a reader to be raw and authentic, yeah? I'm coming from a place where I'm trying to really engage with a collective that is spiritual, but you're out in the corporate world doing real shit, so we haven't got the time to go, um, all the time and be super light. I swear, I'm loud, I'm obnoxious and egoic and driven and wild, but I'm loving and I care, and I'm doing it because I want to see you improve and evolve, and I haven't always got the time to sugarcoat my words and say the nicest thing. I don't ever want to hurt anyone on the platform. It's not going to benefit me to get my numbers up if I come out here slagging you off. I don't want that. But I don't want to lie and say it's the other person and it's not you and it's this and it's that. If I can see it's your energy, then I have to be honest. I owe it to myself and I owe it to you to be genuine on the platform, guys. First card coming out, separation. Devotion. You're devoted to someone that you're separated from, but there's signs here, signs of... The time, yeah? You're waiting for the right time. You've already surrendered this. You're already in the shadow work now. You've got more shadow work to do, Leo. A lot more shadow work to do. Right now, you're cold. You're detached. You're connecting with this energy of twin flame. You could be listening to a high level of twin flame readings at this time, which is not good for you. If you go and watch my corporate ascension video chakra story and it talks about making love to your chakras to incorporate the whole you will understand by the end of that transmission what on earth a twin flame is it is not about another person in the physical i'm looking at a feminine surrendering to shadow work and being devoted to a separation hold on wait i can't see if you're do oh now there's a karmic situation yeah Awful, awful um, relationship separation, could have been affairs, cheating, infidelity, a karmic situation. You're devoted to change in your life now. Because I needed to go and check to see if you were devoted to staying in, in, and into this separation because it looked like that at first. It looked like you were devoted to the separation, which, but in the sense of devoted to just being there, hoping that things were going to get better. But now you're devoted to this, I think you was for a while. Now you're devoted to the separation as in, I'm devoted to us being separate. I'm devoted to me going on this journey. But you are still in shadow work. You're healing because you have a family with this person, possibly two kids, a girl and a, and a, and a son. Yeah? Looking at an older girl, a younger son, the son, you could have all went on a holiday together to a hot country, perfect kind of family um, makeup and whatever's happened, it's broken down. You thought this person was your twin flame, your divine masculine or divine feminine and breaking up from them was a sign you kept getting signs that you were going to break up you kept having dreams or nightmares that the relationship was going to have come to an end you kept having dreams or nightmares that they were cheating on you or being unfaithful you knew something was coming before it actually came summer's going to be a much better time for you because now you are at a crossroads you have been doing the shadow work there is more to come even after this or during this you might cry that's okay you're healing that's natural, that's healthy, keep staying positive, you're moving in a new direction. You could have been engaged to this person, married to this person, living with this person for a long period of time. You're patiently trying to heal what this is. I see someone and because you're co there's contemplation here about how this all happened. How this all played out. Grief is a big thing here as well. Grieving this. You genuinely do have to grieve this, you know. Loving relationships, relationships of any kind, even if the person isn't dead, you have to grieve them as if they were are dead. Because the union that you had with them is now gone and, gone and over. And until you truly grieve them accept that they're gone forever let go in the pride of ego of like i don't need them i don't care i'm moving on you know when we um, break up from guys right and we, we're like okay gonna go and get a new haircut go and go, gonna go and do this gonna um change my socials gonna block um gonna block them gonna or gonna dress up really really sexy to piss them off whatever you're gonna do to try and up one them it hasn't worked and it's not working and you know it isn't and all of that those antics are just blocking the truth because you should be admired 
there's something that you're doing potentially on social media or even something you've got to release on social media so you can spend more time alone yeah you should be admired but then you need to release something and be alone so initially i just said something on social media you need to release social media for a little while so you can be alone so when you go back to social media you can be admired that's weird, but that's what I get, right? You know, you need, like, I know loads of people that deactivate their accounts for ages to take time to just heal, yeah? I fucking blew up my old social media account as part of a research project, lost all my family and friends. Everyone uh, fucking judged me and made me feel like absolute shit. Broke me down, deactivated my account. I didn't even reactivate it. I just made a whole new account and got on with my life. Now I'm here living my best fucking life. I lo like, it was hard for me, though. I had to greet family members that are still alive now. Family and friends that I loved and cared about. That's what we've got to do sometimes. We've got to walk away from the old lives that we think we're destined for and choose to start again. Because that's the only way we can get unstuck. Otherwise, we just continue to paradoxical... We end up causal looping. Paradoxical symptoms just around and round again. We choose to wear masks and we wear major masks online. Major masks online. I deliberately play up online on social media on purpose and say I do because I want people to know this is an illusion. It's not real, guys. Can we break it? Is anyone else out there? I've always said, is anyone out there? There, there. Is anyone out there? Anyone real and genuine on the platform? Anyone really trying to be who they really are? Anyone? No, we're just going to fake it today. Fine, I'll be fake today too. Tomorrow I'll check in and see if anyone's awake. No one's still awake. Okay, I'll keep being fake. Faking it today, guys. Faking it tomorrow. Fake it next week. If you want to see the real me, come over to YouTube. I'm talking real things. But Instagram is the fakest place on earth. So let's keep faking it. All of that kind of energy, right? You just like it's, it's about finding a healthy balance between social media on and offline, especially with metaverse coming. So much content I've got around that as well. And I'm also bringing out a video called um, Is Anybody Out There? wants and needs of the galaxy where i talk about the um the cosmos and the balance and the ecosystem of the um galaxy and how that relates to us and what we do every day in in line with the brahma the creator piece i brought out brought out ying and yang um gaia and ra that piece we talk about the um cosmos story since the start of time and um i'm going to go a lot more on the um wants and needs of the galaxy in that so what you want in your life versus what you need like you wanted this relationship but you didn't need it. And when you feel like, when you want something so badly, you act needy for it, but it wasn't an actual need. And that's when you get caught up in cycles of the worst kind. And that's why you're going through dark night, not dark night of the soul, but shadow work now. You already went through the dark night of the soul. This family makeup as well, being alone after having a family. I see you going on a holiday with a family. That's all I see, like a hot country with your kids, and your partner and it just being everything that you wanted and a dream come true and the life that you thought you wanted and you felt like you had found your twin flame it's that kind of energy but it's about removing the mask to all of that because your self-worth isn't rooted in that ideology in that one fairy tale in that one kodak moment that isn't the be end and all of your life you know you know you're breathing right now. You know you're ascending right now. You know you're a light worker, beautiful soul, destined for more right now. You know that, right? You, you know that you don't need anyone but you, right? Tell me you know. Hit the like. Show me you know. Help me, help me receive. Because now you've got a fresh start. What That Kodak moment you had... That's just a very simple, real-life, physical manifestation and Kodak moment on your vision board for the future because you are manifesting something way better. You were unawakened in this relationship. Dark night of the soul, unawakened. You were, you were trying to be the divine feminine in the connection, but the vibration was unforgiving and unrelenting and there was the divine masculine energy here. I feel like... I'm connecting with a fem so many feminine cards out. So if I'm wrong, then you and you're an actual man, understand you were in more of the feminine vibration in the relationship. This could also be same sex. But you had to refocus your energy on the masculine and feminine vibrations of the connection. But that you, in order to do that, you had to go through nostalgia. You had to hear all the lies and deceit. You had to watch stuff online that you didn't like. Or you were posting shit about yourself online that you didn't like. We all go through toxic cycles. Me especially, I, I had to do a public research fucking experiment for my doctorate, which is, well, oh, 
blew up in my face in many different senses of the word where I'm just pouring out elements of self and doing all of this stuff to oh I can't even put it into words there's so much judgment for a lack of understanding of what you do sometimes and you, you just got to realize fuck proving anything to anyone else because no one gives a fuck Everyone looks at you and wants to judge. Everyone will watch you in secret and silence and tear you down in their own personal ways. And at the end of the day, all you can do is offer yourself love, offer yourself truth, communicate with you. Let go of past hurts and regrets and a lack of understanding of self and other and look at your inner child. Look at your inner child. Start really trying to heal your inner child. Work on your financial abundance. Compromise with the money that you're spending, the money that you're accruing. Awaken to a new tribe, a new family network. Yeah. Remove barriers and blockages. Say yes to yourself a lot more. Say yes to going out with your friends a lot more. Third party. And don't be bound to any ideas of a third party as well. I'm going to look at what that actually means because that was the last card that came out. And I just, do you hear the way I said that? interesting how i said that don't be bound to ideas of a third party as well let's look at that let's look at that and then call that a day yeah because the karmic cards came out already the separation the possibility of infidelity and affairs like you know okay so if you're coming out of a relationship and you had family with someone else then you get the fear vibration and this is probably the hardest part of the shadow is okay so what if they move on what if they move on before me and now they get a whole new family and i have to now watch oh there's nothing worse than looking on facebook or instagram and seeing your ex have a whole new life and family oh my i've been there I have been there, my ex cheated on me, got another woman pregnant, didn't tell me, found out that they had a baby shower, let the rest of the world know that they were, that she was pregnant, but no one decided to tell me, found out I was the actual fucking side chick in the situation, he's coming to see me, calling me, telling me he loves me to pieces, he has no idea what I'm talking about, it's a lie, but the motherfucker didn't know that I've seen it all over Facebook holding her belly in baby shower photos i was broken for years after that deeply heartbroken refused to date anyone see anyone i turned into a fucking nun went on a vow of celibacy that is when i awakened to spirituality because i never thought i would love again never thought i would love again never thought i'd be okay again Got whole, I had to break it to my whole family, tell my whole family what had happened, that I'd been cheated on. He had spent time, like, knew my mum and brother, brothers. It was just the most devastating thing for me. Changed my outlook on love and relationships for a long time. A lot of shadow work because of that. And then when I decided to break my celibacy, I was out in these streets just dating and just sleep, like, refusing to be committed to anyone. I was just dating loads of people because I, I just... I just was scared of even trying to be in a commitment. So we're looking a little bit, separation cards out again straight away. This is really about separation for real, for real. So we're looking at, but you, you were abandoned in this connection, you feel, and totally separated. And that's, this is where the, you, there was a lot of pride and ego. And it's like, you got, I think they ended it with you. And there's nothing worse than having a long-term committed some relationship with someone and then them ending it with you. I feel like maybe you, there was a lot of pride and ego where you didn't feel like they were going to end it with you. You didn't want to own how you were really feeling. You didn't want to deal with the niggles in the relationship. You thought they would just go away. You weren't your true self in the relationship is the most important thing I want to say. So the third party energy here is the fact that you weren't who you really were in the relationship. So don't worry about any external, I don't see any affairs and cheating, even though I saw karmic energy and there could have been issues, but the real karmic vibration was the person that you pretended to be versus who you really were. Sometimes we get into relationships, especially from young ages, I just told you the way in which I got cheated on and lied to, and this man's coming to my house where I live with my family, staying with me, walking around town, holding hands, kissing in public, and he's got a whole other woman on the other end of London who is holding in fucking baby shower photos, holding her belly. He then gets with her and repeatedly calls me, telling me he wishes his born children were mine. What kind of guy calls their ex, who he's now made feels like a side chick, and is repeatedly telling me, oh, every time I look at my son, I just wish that, I wish it was yours. What? What? Why are you messaging me that? Why are you calling me that all the time to tell me you wish your son was mine? 
Fuck that. Cringe. Or oh, that's when you know you fucking dodged a bullet. And uh, oh, you need situations like that to wake up and truly understand. And the understandings cards coming out as I say that. You were blocked in this. You didn't let your guard down in this connection all the time that you was in it. Because you didn't feel like you could. There, and there's a reason for that. You couldn't surrender to this relationship for a reason. So there was a third party blockage on this connection ethereally for a reason. Because it wasn't meant to be. So don't regret it. Release the judgment that you have on yourself. Because... You had to go through this to balance yourself out. Ten years from now, five years from now, you won't remember any of this. You'll be settled down in a brand new relationship and you won't have any more of these fears. And you won't be upset. You wouldn't have grieved. You're patiently surrendering now so you can awaken to a newer version of self. And at the end of the day, your self-worth is going to be incredible because of this. And now you're truly learning about your vibration. I've been speaking a lot about spiritualists. Those who um, read, ta read tarot, singing bowls, Tibetan bowls, do yoga, claim to do all this spiritualist stuff. But they don't go into the psyche. I said, I'm really fed up of people claiming they're woke and screaming they're spiritual, but you're not doing anything spiritual because I can look at your aura, I can read your energy and I can see that you don't, you're not doing anything. And I feel like a part of you will realise in the past that if you were claiming spirituality, claiming this, claiming that I'm this person, I'm this kind of feminine, I'm this kind of masculine, I do this in love, I do that in love, that wasn't who you really were. You were just trying to be what the other person wanted and that's always going to catch up with you in a relationship. You go into a relationship young and naive, wanting to fill the other person's need. I'm getting a lot of Sagittarius energy with this as well. And in that moment, so you could have been dealing with a Sagittarius, but in that moment, you, you don't want to be alone. You don't want to be abandoned. You want to be in a relationship. Your desire for this relationship is way more for the desire for you to evolve spiritually. So you choose to give all your time and energy to being what the other person wants. And in that same breath, you've neglected your spiritual ascension. You don't know you. You've never known you. You've never had the time to know you. You've only known this relationship and this connection. And you chose to be bound to it, devoted to it. And as a result, the universe brought you to a crossroads. And in that moment, the third party energy was, whoa, a reinvention is needed here. What are you really offering to them? What are you really offering to you? And what is the true north, the true direction you're going to go in? And things fall apart and break down so you can have more. If my, my um, ex, the one that cheated on me like that, didn't. If, I, if, he never, if he never done that, I would have stayed with him. And I would have had... A, we was preparing to move in together and we were talking about having kids. So at that time, I was about 25, 26. By the time I was 27, I would have been living with him. We would have had a house and married with kids. Yuck. That was before I even knew spirituality. After that, that's when I started going on my spiritual awakening. Look at my life now. Look at my career now. Look who I am now. Ain't got no kids free, unencumbered, ready to take over the fucking world. Absolute savage, absolute boss bitch. Gonna be so abundant and fabulous in the future. And I can have kids in a healthy way with someone who isn't a wanker and bastard who probably would have cheated on me in the future anyway, considering he was cheating on me that whole time. While we're saving up money for a place to live together and he's constantly trying to impregnate me. What the fuck? Lucky birth, wide birth. Same for you. Same for you, you're saved. You know? And I'm sorry, I feel like I've been a little bit intense. So I feel like you're definitely going to have some shadow work because we've already seen that. So just be sensitive with yourself if you're emotional over the next two weeks because I've hit you with some stuff that may have been a little bit unconscious before and we've really brought it to the forefront today. So if you are emotional or overwhelmed just and you feel like you want to cry suddenly or you had a little cry but you still got to get on with the day, go and take time to chill out in the bedroom and um, um, take a little nap, take a little rest, unwind, um, go to the beach, um, chill out, go for a walk, go for a hike, go for a stroll. You know, especially if your kids look like your partner as well, that could be difficult. And if you, if you separate with someone and you still live in the family house and you've got to go into the same bed that you had, start thinking about getting new furniture and changing the environment around. So it, it, the house that you live in with that, the house that you lived in with that person, the memories that you had with that person are not edged into the wall and the feng shui of the space, because that's also hard as well. You break up and it's like, oh, these are the same sheets that 
we made love on on Valentine's. Like cringe. Like sorry, that's a memory from my past. Cringe, cringe. Ugh. It's it's hard though. It's hard because it's like there's so many memories that you develop together, and it's that Kodak moment. You know, we do have to burn those photos at least in memory. Yeah. You know when you like burn your diary, burn all the stuff from your ex. It comes to a stage where you also have to burn the memories of it. Eject the floppy disk and the USBs and the and the key codes and the memories and the mind space of it. Don't, like you haven't got to let it go forever, but I mean, it's like the pensive in Harry Potter. You got to you got to take out stuff that's unnecessary and just going to block your um your magical gifts and abilities because you've got to keep going and it's not about forgetting it we can go back to the pensive and reminisce any moment we need to but we do have to make space for new yeah love and light leo i'll be back soon with more